Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to talk about New York State government, New York State reform, uh, the potential for a constitutional convention. And I'm so excited to have one of my former colleagues in the New York State Assembly joining me today, and that's Richard Brodsky. I'm so glad you're here, Richard. It's nice to be back, Sandy. Yeah. It really well, is. well you've, you left the Assembly, and now you have a whole long list of things that you're doing. Um, you are a senior fellow now with Demos and a current senior fellow at the Wagner School at NYU. Uh, you're also a lawyer. You're also a columnist um, with the Albany Times Union. So I see those when I'm up in Albany and the Huff Post. And so they're probably I'm, I'm, a whole I'm bunch busy, of other Sandy. things. You're really know, busy. I don't know that it's doing anybody any good, but I'm busy. Well, so you were in the assembly for, for many years. And then did you just all those issues and all those things that you did is just gone right into all these other activities that you're involved well, with? Well, you, you, once you're involved in the public process, once you're part of a, a system that pays attention to civic and community mm -hmm. concerns, um, it's fun. The working in the assembly is great. Uh, the, uh, you're, it's fun. It's important. Things get done. So um, the parts that I've kept going in the public service stuff are a great pleasure for me. I enjoy it. Right. So when you are writing columns and so on, um, are they related to, to some of the issues or concerns that you had when you were in the assembly? Sure, but they're also right. more current, uh, I like to think. Mm -hmm. um, I have a column that's coming out this coming Monday in the Times Union about uh, Congressman Chris Gibson's campaign for governor and how he tried mm -hmm. to compromise his way on the SAFE Act, the gun uh, legislation mm -hmm. and sort of made a mistake that let him get hit very hard by the anti-gun, the pro-SAFE Act mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. The point of it being that politics always comes back to be a factor in policy and right. that he's learning that I think the hard way in, in New York. But yes, I, I reflect what I did care about and, mm -hmm. and I reflect a little bit about what's going on there. One of your main issues and um, is Right now, you've been talking a lot, because I've heard you at another discussion a couple of years ago, actually, in the city, talking about this constitutional convention. And uh, by law, every 20 years, we have to have a vote with the public as to whether they'd have to want, a lot, want to have a convention um, so that we can look at our Constitution, our New York State Constitution, and see if any changes are, are necessary. And that's going to come up in 2017, November which is 2017. like, you know, a year away. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's an interesting concept. It's a mechanism to get around elected officials where the public directly can decide whether it wants to call into question mm -hmm. the, the, the wisdom of or the need for change in the state constitution. State constitution is not like the federal constitution. The federal constitution's architecture. It's a blueprint. Mm -hmm. It's a Congress. It's a judiciary. The state constitution is full of social policy, and it's supposed to be. It's why it's much longer than the mm -hmm. federal constitution. So if you care about education, if you care about the uh, rights of the disabled, if you care about the environment, there are articles in the state constitution that set forth what the social policy of the state mm -hmm, is. Mm -hmm. Everybody is for change. I don't know anybody mm -hmm. who doesn't want to change. Well, but yes. But whether, <laughs> whether the, you do that through a constitutional convention or not becomes... Very interesting. Um, we're out there with a bunch of folks, the League of Women Voters, the State Bar Association, uh, the Rockefeller Institute of Government, which where I serve as a, a, a board member. Not so much to advocate for a convention or against it, but to say to people, here's what's at stake, here's why mm -hmm. it matters, and here's what you should be thinking about. Mm -hmm. If, for example, you care about public schools, the state constitution has pieces in it that tell you what you need to do to create what's called a sound basic education. Mm -hmm. Some people want to change it. They like charter schools. Some people don't. Mm -hmm. It gets into the big stuff. It gets into the big stuff fast. What's attracting a lot of attention is reform, term limits, unicameral legislature, And ethics. that could be in the Constitution. Well, so a lot of it is. Right. Um, and whether the Because right now, like re assembly, we're, we're part-time legislators, um, and that's in the Constitution that yeah. way. So it could be changed to be full-time legislators. Reapportionment, which is, I think, something people mm -hmm. look to very quickly, that's a constitutional issue. So again, without taking sides on the question of whether you should vote yes or no in November 2017, uh, it's time to begin the conversation 
about whether we want to go down that road or not. Mm -hmm. The last convention that was convened was in 1967. It was a huge undertaking. And then the convention product was defeated in the final approval referendum. People get three but, bites but at the apple. They, didn't they, at that convention, combine all of their issues kind of in one? Yes. And so if somebody didn't like one part of it, they're going to vote there no on the whole There was a big thing. fuss about what's called the Blaine Amendment, which is mm -hmm. a limitation on eight to parochial schools. They moved to repeal the Blaine Amendment. And that alone electrified the electorate in a negative way, and a lot of other stuff went down. The good news is that a lot of the things they proposed that didn't become part of the Constitution in the referendum eventually were adopted as either state policy or uh, as part of the Constitution by individual amendments. Mm -hmm. So on net over the course, looking back almost 50 years ago, it, it worked. It did not, however, uh, uh, end up with an approved set of constitutional mm -hmm. changes. Because as you said, um, that the convention kind of goes around the legislators because we as legislators can propose and uh, adopt legislation in both the Senate and the Assembly to go out to the public for an amendment. We've done a few. One, one of them most recently was mine about the paper on your right. desk. <laughs> and it passed. And it passed because the Constitution said you had to, all your bills had to be in paper. Now, you know, we have tablets and we have all kinds of other things that, and hopefully in the future, whatever comes along will be okay. I, I authored one on dealing with, of all things, a cemetery in the town of Keene in the Adirondacks, which is part of the Adirondacks Preserve. So amending the Constitution now is possible. Legislature right. can also call for a convention. Or, yes. in the end, you can go around the elected officials and have the people call one themselves. Right. Do you recall whether the legislature has ever called for a convention? 67 convention was oh, called 67. by the legislature. Oh, 67. Oh, wow. So let's go back. So 67, um, well, we had one in 97. No, we had a vote. We had a, we had a vote, vote in, in 77. 97. Right. We had a vote in 97. We're going to have a vote in 2017. Right. But that's the referendum part of calling right. the convention. In 67, the legislature, actually in 65, announced it was calling a convention, uh, uh, partially because it was people really thought it was time to look at the last successful convention, which was 1938. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, a lot of good work got done, uh, a lot of good work, but it didn't ever become law except in pieces subsequent to the final referendum. Right. Do people get um, very anxious about this, all these different groups and organizations? Some of them some do. seem, yeah, it seems like some people have fought hard to get maybe more protections in the Adirondacks so they don't necessarily want to go back and have the public, you know, voting from New York City I, about I the Adirondacks. I think it's safe to say that the labor unions and people on the left have been more suspect of the convention and the, the support for it has come out of what I'd call uh, more conservative areas of upstate largely on process questions. Um, uh, so this year there's only been one major group that's taken a position on the referendum. That's the teachers union. They came out against it. Mm -hmm. I suspect mm -hmm. you're going to see um, people with an interest in the outcome who want to protect parts of the Constitution mm -hmm. they think are important, being anti-convention, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a right mm -hmm. to make that decision. But in the end, the people of the state are going to have to decide whether they want to risk a full open discussion about everything. You can't mm -hmm. limit what a convention right. considers. And if the convention, you want a convention to consider only uh, uh, ethics reform, it is you can't do that. You can't, you can't do that. You, it, it can go in and decide to repeal mm -hmm. the Blaine Amendment. Mm -hmm. So it, it's 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 democracy at its best in the sense that um, the people make this decision in an era of TV ads. Who's going to spend what on who? Mm -hmm. Who knows? It would be a full-blown campaign. I mean, people do run for office uh, to to be a convention delegate. People have to run. Well, look at that. There, are th the, the public gets three bites at the apple. First is the November 17 referendum in which they vote yes or no. If they vote yes, a year later, there's a delegate election. There are three from every Senate district mm -hmm. and then 15 uh, at large. Then the convention meets. And after that, the third vote by the people 
is to approve or disapprove the convention's recommendations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's it's democracy. There's no question right, about that. Right, and they could be done one by one, right? If they if they have ten things that they they have come to agreement on that they want to put out for the public, they can put them on separately on the ballot. I be, I believe they can, the convention right. itself decides what form of approval they're going to seek from the voters in the mm -hmm. state. So one of the issues that we're facing in Albany, and we've really had some really difficult years, and Richard, you were there through some of them with our colleagues. No, no, I was gone before they... No, <laughs> well, not those, but, but it's, it, it had happened it, it, it's, it, it, over you're the last 20 true. years. You know, we've had, you know, not one after another, but we've had different as kinds... As long as you say it also involves the executive branch, I, right. I think I can agree, because we've had... Mm -hmm. 50% uh, of the controllers in New York in the past 10 years have gone to jail. Um, one third of the l recent governors have been have left office in disgrace, mm -hmm. and about mm -hmm. eight or nine percent of the legislature. Now, it's all unacceptable. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are things you can think about changing um, to, to to deal with it, but a constitutional convention could be. A vehicle for considering right. those things, and and one of those issues that comes out in polls that the press takes all the time is about pension and pension reform, and uh, for anybody that is convicted of a crime, um, that they would lose their pension. That that seems to be the one that that people focus on. I guess it's really hard seeing uh, an elected official or a state employee going to jail and collecting the pension. Uh, they do well, have families. We have to remember people have families, I, too. Look, there's got to be a, a proportionality for this. These outrages, the, the, the things that Shelley did, the things that Dean mm -hmm. Skelos did, the things that Malcolm Smith did, the, the people, if the facts are proven, people need to be severely punished. What severely punished means, you know, I, I was not a supporter of the death penalty. I'm not a supporter of killing families mm -hmm. economically. Mm -hmm. I am for balancing the crime with the punishment. Um, and I am for thinking carefully about what constitutes real reform. Uh, I am fascinated by this debate about outside income. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, yes. uh, right now... Let's explain it a little bit. It's, well, there's it's, an argument to be made, people saying, well, the problem with these last two, uh, with the Shelley case at least, was that he had outside income. Mm -hmm. And the way to deal with that is to change the compensation. So Shelley Silver was the speaker of the New York State Assembly and Dean Skelos was majority leader right. of the Senate. The Dean right. case was not about his income, it was about right. his family's income. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in Shelley's case he was earning money um, that arguably, and the jury found it, was conflicted with what he was doing on policy stuff and he mm -hmm. was found guilty. That led to a discussion about, well, we should just bar outside income. Uh, that to some people means also you have to raise legislative salary since it, for most of the state it's hard to raise a family on $79,000 a year. Right. Well, I have to tell you, I asked this in a poll in my newsletter, um, should we raise salaries and cut out outside income and people said, and make, make, make legislators full time? They said, well, make legislators full time but keep the salary as it is. Yeah. So, yeah, there, you know, that's, that's the, you can't really This goes to this justify the question that. of pension. There's anger right. out there mm -hmm. and anger doesn't always yield mm -hmm. thoughtful uh, uh, concept. But, Back to outside income. Well, it makes some sense the first time you talk about it. The problem is that the people proposing it are only proposing a ban on earned income. In other words, you can't have another job. Mm -hmm. But if you own a company, mm -hmm. have the same conflicts, that right. would be okay. I, that makes absolutely no sense to me. If you're going to bar outside income, bar outside income. If you're not, don't take the guy who has a job and treat him as particularly susceptible to corruption when the guy who owns the factory can still mm -hmm. own the factory and, and, and is subject to the same conflict, uh, conf conflictual pressures. Mm -hmm. I, again, I'm not suggesting I'm right and everyone else is wrong. What I'm suggesting is, is that the debate about what constitutes reform is a very right. complicated thing in, in an era where people want easy solutions. Are you for reform or are you against right. it? It's not that simple. No, it really, I mean, we've been discussing actually for weeks about this outside income and, and what to do. And, you know, we're really kind of all over the place. There's this whole question of people having um, outside income so that they have another um, learning Oof. process to bring to the process. If they're a pharmacist, 
that they know a little bit more about the pharmacy industry and it's what's happening. It's been very helpful to issues we've had to deal with to have members stand up and say, I'm a pharmacist right. and this way of packaging prescriptions doesn't make any sense. Right. I did a bill on uh, double and triple uh, prescriptions for steroids years ago and if it wasn't mm -hmm. for the pharmacists in the legislature, I would have made, let's just say, some mistakes. Right. So, uh, but the, the problem isn't that there are two sides. There are. Mm -hmm. The problem is that the debate is in a political environment in which many people, including many editorial boards, are so angry with, and justifiably angry, at mm -hmm. some of the things that have happened that they, there's a sort of almost a slash and burn question about what that reform agenda ought to right. be. Uh, yeah, it, it, it seems to me that we ought to be ha able to have that conversation without it being a a contest between good guys and bad guys. Mm -hmm. Thoughtful people can disagree, like on the question of pensions. I mean, mm -hmm. you have a, a, a somebody who was convicted of a crime, goes to jail, comes out as basically unemployable, mm -hmm. and has a family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to impoverish that family too? Is that part of the of the way to make sure that people don't take the risk? Is it does it actually? I don't know. It's hard. It's, it's hard. hard. And we've talked about you know the family could end up on on welfare and then. Whereas they could have used the, the, the dollars yeah, <laughs> that I, somebody I, contributed to it. But, but it is difficult. What about, I mean, I'm sure there would be at a constitutional um, convention discussion about initiative and referendum, which other states have, I would assume, um, you know, as, as part of the discussion. Um, uh, term limits, I suppose, would be a part of that. Um, Changes in the way the governor has control over the budget. Oh, absolutely. Uh, what's absolutely. called the Pataki v. Silver case. Right. Uh, which I am. I think is an undemocratic and awful way. The governor now has the power, literally, to change any law he wants to change. The legislature can't mm -hmm, stop him. Mm -hmm. That's not democracy. Right. Now that now that I've made my speech, right. th it seems to me that those are the kind of things that, yes, a convention would consider. But do you want to take the risk? Um, that's the conversation over the next mm -hmm, uh, 18 months. Mm -hmm. So what about from the environmental community? We, we have, you know, the Adirondacks are a big part of, of our Constitution uh, or protection, which I assume came along. I don't know when that came into the Constitution. I have no In the no idea, late 1890s. 1890s. So, and we had, a couple of years ago, we had actually some proposals out to change the Constitution so that in one, they could switch some property and That's have some mining. That's what I mining. did for my constitutional amendment. Uh, but right. it, with, mine was for a cemetery in right. the town of Keene. But anytime you want to take land out of the, what's called the forest preserve, you need a constitutional amendment. Yes, right. people want to make it easier to take land out of the preserve. Mm -hmm, Lots mm -hmm. of people don't want to do that. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. historically, um, the opposition to a constitutional convention came from people who had won hard fights for important issues. For example, there's a, a, a piece of the Constitution that says that um, the rights of the disabled must be respected. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, th there are people now who say they want the rights of women respected, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's, mm -hmm. it's a perfectly legitimate argument. Right. But the people who already have the rights don't necessarily want to get into a situation where they're subject to losing them in the right. face of other more politically powerful pressures. It's not chopped liver, as we mm -hmm, say in Italian, mm -hmm. uh, to think about that. But in the end, as Governor Cuomo said, and, uh, when he and I were, I think, w two of the few, I think you supported the convention, didn't I you? I have supported the convention. Yeah, um, uh, we're, we're out there on, on the hustings fighting for it. In the end, you gotta trust the people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the, since they get three bites at the apple, right. it's going to be hard. The people of the state have common sense, mm -hmm. and they can be trusted with important decisions. And right. generally speaking, that was my position 20 years right. ago. I'll come to a conclusion about this cycle in due course, but right I now think, I want to get the discussion. Yeah, going. I think part of it is so much of the education about it. I mean, when, pe when, you, when people are faced with um, Semantico on television, which happened about 20 years ago, um, and they know nothing about it. It seems it's incumbent upon all of us, you know, me as a legislator, you as a columnist or whatever, to, to write about these things, discuss it, so people start to, in their mind, kind of focus in on what's in their convention. The, 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 that's what the Rockefeller or Institute of Government, that's what the League of Women Voters, that's what the State Bar mm -hmm. Association is trying to do. We're not advocating for or against the 
the call. We're trying to get people to figure out what matters to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's talk about lobbyists a little bit. Um, Richard, you were on the Westchester County Board of Legislators with me, and I, I don't remember a lot of lobbyists. We might have had a couple from the utilities or something. I, I don't know. I, I just don't remember a lot. But when I got to Albany, oh, wow. I mean, it seemed like there were people lobbying for everything. Of course, we have a huge budget this year, $145 billion, so you have lobbyists probably for every million of that. Um, well, some of those everywhere. lobbyists are what you would call lobbying for what we'll call special interests. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. of them are lobbying for the public interest. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are lobbyists and there are lobbyists. Uh, the Sierra Club has a lobbyist. Um, I don't think they have a special interest uh, pleading. Uh, 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 utilities have a lobbyist. They have mm -hmm. their own mm -hmm. special agenda. I'm not sure that lobbying is the problem. I kind of think lobbying helps. I think the problem is the tying in of lobbying to political contributions. Right. And right. there, I think, given Citizens United, you have this terrible problem. I, I, it was interesting to see what happened to the press when Jacob, the ethics watchdog, proposed that lobbyists or quasi-lobbyists who try to influence the outcome by going to editorial boards should mm -hmm. reveal that they're making those efforts. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. press got outraged. Mm -hmm. It was it always interest me when right. people's ox gets gored, they right. all of a sudden... They went the inside scoop the, the, or whatever. See, see, they, they see what the problems are. At any event, um, the problem isn't so much people saying to you, we'd like you to consider taking this position. The problem is we'd like you to consider taking this position, when's your next fundraiser? Mm -hmm. And that, I think, we can break. Mm -hmm. that, that linkage we can break. We have, well, we have people that are organizations that, you know, f one half of the year they raise money and run campaigns. Second half of the year they come up and lobby the same, they can lobby the same people. And I think that's where you sometimes get into trouble, That's too. what Jacob was trying, trying to do. Um, the, the, the question of what constitutes a conflict is really at the heart of everything from the Silver mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and Skelos cases to the question of how you keep the lobbying system within reasonable bounds. Um, and uh, there are ways to deal with that. Some of them we tried in the Public Authorities Reform Act, you may recall, mm -hmm. uh, some of which may make sense in this climate. but. Um, the, the influence of money is not is more than it should be, mm -hmm. no question. Well, you can well you remember on a Monday or Tuesday night in Albany, all of the events and lots of money is moved around from lobbyists to, you know, to to elected officials right there. To the campaigns of elected officials. Right. To if the you campaigns it, of, it, right. It, again, it's a distinction worth making. These are not supposed to be, and are generally not, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. monies that are put in anybody's private no, pocket. No, right, absolutely this not. Is, this is about re-election right. campaigns or mm -hmm. election campaigns. So, yeah, it's a big problem, but B, we have a constitutional uh, decision, the Citizens United, that's going to make it very hard right. for a state to... And what uh, happens more. is the more that people can raise money, the, the more expensive all these campaigns are. And you're going to get fewer, it would seem like you're going to get fewer and fewer people running don't for have these their offices, own money. unless you have your own money. Yeah, which is, right. again, uh, income inequality is not just a matter of unfairness on the job. It, mm -hmm. it's, it goes to the way power is distributed. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about the public financing aspect? New York City does yeah, public... Yeah, I'm a big supporter. Uh, uh, I understand its limitations. They, they now have what are called independent expenditures that mm -hmm. you can't stop. Uh, mm -hmm. Which makes, the, in other words, a rich person can give millions to a, an independent committee, but would be limited to two thousand dollars for a campaign. Right. It, the, the, there are flaws in that system, mm -hmm. but what? Nonetheless, it would be a substantial improvement over what's going on there. Right. Because because it seems like in New York City, um, there are more people that seems to be running for city council. I think than than we find up here, uh, and, and they do get a match, six to one, I think, in, in New York City to uh, be able to, and then you have a mix, you have a real mix of people. You have a real mix of people. I, I, it always fascinates me to know if, if what you're really saying is that look at the City Council of New York, there's a f place that knows how to function. I'm not so no, sure. No, I wasn't talking I, about I, it from that perspective. Well, but the value <laughs> but of public finance to the public in the end is a better functioning government. Right. And, right. and um, 
although I'm a big supporter, evidence needs to be looked at for what it is right. and objectively. And I'm, I'm not sure what the outcome would be in New York City. So back to the Assembly of the Senate and how, how it's run. Would it help if there were some term limits on the speakership and so on so that nobody really got entrenched no. at all? You don't, no, I, you don't think so? I think the real danger here is not limiting the power of the legislature. It's that the power of the legislature is too limited. Um, take the, the budget process. The, the, the fact of the matter is that um, in, in, in what should be a democracy, the governor has dictatorial powers. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. the, the way you fix what's going on in the legislature is by rebalancing the powers of the, I'm not for, uh, I'm not for term limits, uh, I'm, I'm not for full-time legislature. Uh, uh, and I understand I'm in a minority, that the public at large well, hears this. We may not this, be, but it, right. I, I think you I think, am. You think you are. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, it, it, the, again, trying to make sensible change rather than just rush to the next thing. Mm -hmm. You, you, you what, remember this, Sandy, right. that when they, when they developed uh, heroin, it was as mm -hmm. a remedy for opium addiction. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. we oh. need a remedy <laughs> for heroin. So sometimes the right. solution turns out to be the problem. Right, right, which is really interesting. And, and actually, when you think about um, some of the issues with some of our legislators, um, they're not all that they've been there a long time. Some have been. But there are others that have come in. There was, there was one just thought that they could get paid to put a bill in, uh, you know, a new legislator, a couple of years there. Yeah. You, you know, the, it just doesn't make the, any the, sense. The, 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 there are character issues, and they'll always be there. Uh, look, New York State government today is infinitely cleaner and more effective and more honest than it was 150 years ago. Mm -hmm. There's no boss tweed. There's no selling of franchises. There's no selling of state contracts, probably. Um, and, and these awful events are not indicative. The system is not corrupt. Right. It just isn't. And it is although convenient to make that case. And there are things that need to be changed, and the legislature may have a special responsibility to lead that fight. Um, it's a, one of the great tragedies of these terrible uh, betrayals is a generic loss of faith in the system mm -hmm. and that's that's not and right. I'm actually betrayed too as you More are so I mean you anybody. know these people uh, so many a number that I've worked with you know very closely and you know I absolutely feel betrayed by them for what they have done and you know I guess more. any law you can put on the book somebody figures out a way around it and in that sense. So as we conclude, what new, what are some of the issues that you're going to be writing about in the future? Well, I've spent a lot of time on the HuffPost stuff on the presidential race. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time on the uh, Albany Times Union on the Albany economic situation, where the governor, who had been an a, a real lefty on social issues, mm -hmm. gay marriage, guns, was a real right winger on economic policy mm -hmm. and has shifted. Mm -hmm. uh, where he was pro, he was a Republican, a Paul Ryan Republican. Tax cuts for the rich, cut the, the estate tax, cut the bank tax, no uh, uh, pay increases. He got a, he had a tough 2014, and in mm -hmm. 2015, mm -hmm. right. he became something of an economic mm -hmm. moderate. Now, he's not a liberal yet, but, right. um, uh, and I, so I write a, I write a right great there. deal about that. That's and, uh, great. Uh, yeah. Well, we will have everybody Read watch out columns, for you. Richard please. Brodsky. Huff Post and the Times Union. Right. That sounds great. Thank you so much for coming. Always I appreciate it nice to so see much. You and thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, give me a call at my office, 914-941-1111. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening.